And this entire Me Too sort of debate takes place in India. A number of women come out, they take on a number of men in public positions. MG Akbar has to quit on account of how many women um, actually come out and say that they were harassed by him. And you take a very different position. You and I have an argument at the time. You know, I said something, you wrote a column rebutting me. Uh, obviously, none of it was personal. And I think that's actually the great thing about you, that you're able to disagree in a convivial way, and too few people are. But I want to understand why a pioneer who broke barriers, who was a trailblazer, remains someone who doesn't pull her punches. Why would you not be more empathetic about women who are speaking about sexual harassment? You know, what I objected to about the Me Too movement, and I actually said then it's going to die because it's an imitation of what's going on in America. Hmm. And any imitation doesn't work. This is a country in which on a daily basis, children, little girls are raped. Their bodies are found in, in drains. And, you know, so I feel that the issues in India are different, that the issues, for instance, uh, gathering fuel wood, is, is, a, is a feminist issue in my view. Why do women not raise that? A woman in a village in India still has to go miles to get water. So she can't be educated. The little girls are doing all the, you know, all this sort of work before they're, they're allowed to go to school. They're married off to old men, all that. Those for me are India's real feminist issues. Me too, I thought was a small, urban elitist issue, which is why I objected to it. Look, at the, look, it look, look at the wrestlers, look at the wrestlers who are on the pavement at the time that we're recording this conversation. You have Olympians and world champions alleging sexual abuse by a very, very powerful man who also happens to be a member of parliament of the BJP, at least at this moment. Is that elitist? Uh, they, I'm on their side totally. And they're not saying me too. They're saying this is sexual harassment. I'm totally against men, powerful men, sexually harassing someone in the, um, in the office or, you know, um, I w would stand with any woman who had to face that. But um, I thought the Me Too mo movement was, was really just a very small uh, little, uh, you know, a copycat movement. And I, I said then it would die and it's died. Let me put it to you a little bit differently. You are quite right in saying that there are millions of Indian women who have basic existential challenges uh, in their daily lives. Uh, and, and, and I agree with that. But is it either or? Look at the sort of deplorably uh, declining numbers of women who are working today. We have fewer women in the labor force today uh, than, than we used to at one point. If you not you, but if, if institutionally there is a kind of looking the other way from women complaining about harassment at the workplace, do you not think, A, it directly correlates to how many women will want to work? Two, just because their issues aren't existential in every day, does it make them any less grief? If the Me Too uh, movement in India had raised both issues, I believe it would have been more credible. They don't raise these other issues. All the big feminists in India don't talk about those women who really face, uh, you know, who really face existential issues, you know, who are being raped and murdered and all that. So, you know, they didn't do that. They just raised this, you know, it was a group of journalists, actually, the women who made the noise. And also, I thought that, you know, uh, I, I just thought that they were that there were women who'd got involved in it who were wrongly charging men with, uh, you know. I mean, you go up, for instance, no names will be mentioned, to a man's bedroom and then say, oh, my goodness, you know, he tried to rape me. You know, I, I think that that's What if you're about. forced to come to the man's bedroom you're and you think forced. your job depends on it? The women that, wrote, that made all these allegations they were jumping on a bandwagon. One woman charge Chetan Bhagat, for instance, with, you know, and I think that he may have tried to kiss her or something like that. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't, the, the, the charges didn't stick. But I'm just saying to you that, you know, there were women in this. If you're, if a woman who is over the age of 18 willingly goes to a man's bedroom, she knows what she's doing. And I think that, you know, you've got to be more balanced about that. I'm just 
questioning you on that word willingly because if that man is her boss if that man is her boss and she and she, should, she doesn't she think say, she doesn't think the lobby anyone can say that she doesn't think she has the space to do that she's scared it's probably her first job Look, I'm, I'm i'm hypothesizing I've i'm not had, talking about I've anyone been in, in those situations and i was just going to ask you that have you faced harassment bullying at work by a male boss yes yes by more than one and i've faced as you may have done as well sources you go to a man's room sources? in a hotel Or and suddenly you know he thinks that you're there before you know for some fun so you know i'm in in a hotel when they see you going up in in you know in the lift to a man's room then all the staff down there also think that you know so there is all that but you know you can deal with that i think that it's there. i've dealt with it i dealt with it i i got punished um for it i you know lost my job once isn't that harassment It, that was harassment that was harassment but you carry on and you know i got a better job and moved on